ओके सो हाय एवरीवन वेलकम टू हाई एनर्जी फिजिक्स जनरल क्लब सो टुडे सो बिफोर वी बिगिन आई रिक्वेस्ट द ऑडियंस टू प्लीज म्यूट द माइक्रोफोन्स एंड ओनली अनम्यूट टू आस्क क्वेश्चंस और ऐड कमेंट्स सो टुडे वी आर वेरी प्लीज टू हैव डॉक्टर मैसनोरी हनाडा एज आवर स्पीकर एंड आई वुड लाइक टू टेक द ऑपरचुनिटी ऑपरचुनिटी टू ब्रीफली इंट्रोड्यूस एन So, Dr. Masu uh, Masunori uh, received his PhD from Kyoto University, Japan, and after that, uh, he was postdoc at Riken Hishina Center, Weizmann Institute of Science, and uh, University of Washington. Uh, he has been assistant professor at Kyoto University uh, at KK Center and associate professor at Kyoto University, and he has been visiting scientist and visiting scholar at uh, various esteemed institutes and universities. currently he is a rutherford fellow at university of surrey uk and so we are glad to have him for the seminar and today he will be uh, talking about confinement deconfinement transitions in d not uh, d not brain matrix model which could be a signature of m theory and so with this over to dr masonel okay thank you thank you very much for the invitation Yeah, oh, in, in case you don't know where Sari is, our university is uh, very close to Heathrow Airport. So in case you have some uh, uh, time in Heathrow, you know, you have to wait six hours. You can just come to our university. So please drop by anytime you like. So today, uh, this is the title, uh, which is the same as a recent paper, uh, a recent preprint appeared in uh, HEPTH uh, this month. Oops, oops. And... Uh, uh, D0 brain matrix model, which is often called the BFSS matrix model, is a, a very simple uh, matrix model, a quantum mechanics of matrices. So this is a Lagrangian. Okay, so this is just a quantum mechanics, not quantum field theory. So we have only time direction, there is no space. And there are nine n by n bosonic matrices, X. This M runs from one to nine. And these nine correspond to nine spatial dimensions in string theory. And uh, there are 16 fermionic matrices, fermionic n by n matrices. And this is uh, uh, the Lagrangian. And this DT is gauge co covariant. DT. This Lagrangian is formally obtained just by dimensionally reducing the four dimensional maximal super mills. So this commutator squared is a remnant of uh, F mu nu squared. Historically, uh, in 1988, Dwight Hoppe and Nikolai proposed this uh, matrix model as a matrix regularization of the supermembrane. So they wanted to quantize a supermembrane in 11 dimension in light cone gauge. And then uh, uh, after some natural regularization procedure, they obtained this matrix model. So they proposed this model as a first qu quantization of the supermembrane. And in 90s, uh, in the context of a string and the M theory, Banks, Fischer, Schenker, and Sasuke Proposed that this model uh, can be regarded as a non perturbative formulation and the second quantization of M theory in some uh, parameter region. Uh, so they, they, they show a bunch of uh, evidence, but uh, it, one easy way to understand in the context of supermembrane is that uh, so supermembrane membrane is a natural object in M theory. And uh, soon after the Dwight Hoppe Nikolai paper, Dwight Lusher and Nikolai found some uh, uh, difficulty in uh, this uh, line of thought. So they wanted to uh, describe one supermembrane. But uh, this model has a so called flat direction. I mean, uh, potentially the commutator is square. So if uh, X are nine matrices are simultaneously diagonalized, then one of the uh, uh, eigenvalues can. Uh, roll to infinity without costing energy. And that uh, is a uh, correspond to instability, like a spike-like instability of a membrane. But these people realized that uh, once this model is regarded as a second quantization of uh, such membrane, then uh, we can have uh, uh, not just one body, but you know, two bodies, three body, and so on, uh, thanks to that instability. So that instability was actually a feature rather than bug. Then this fits naturally. Uh, in the context of the string game theory. That was a BFSS proposal. And after Mardasena's proposal uh, on uh, gauge gravity duality, 
Uh, Itzaki, Marta Sena, Zorin and Shine, and the Yankee Beach suggested that uh, uh, this model can also describe type 2 way superstring theory into fifth limit. The parameter region these people consider is uh, uh, some different parameter region. But they propose that this model, in some parameter region, type 2 way string is realized. In some parameter region, M theory is described, as these people say. And uh, in between, we should be able to see some sort of phase transition between string theory and M theory. That's very exciting. Okay, so we want to study this model. And this is outline of uh, the talk. So first I uh, give some, uh, explain some precision test of uh, this uh, proposal, duality to type 2A superstring. And hopefully I can convince you that the type 2A string is precisely described by this model. This is not a new result, this is all the result. Then I want to uh, uh, proceed to M theory parameter region, which is more ambitious. And uh, I want to give uh, you some hot speculative idea that the confinement in this theory, which was not known before, is related to M theory in this matrix model. And uh, by using the numerical simulation, I will demonstrate to you that the, uh, co such confinement phase actually exists. And uh, I want to claim that exist that the confinement phase exists in this model is a, a evidence supporting the, the duality between this matrix model and M theory. Uh, so Masanuri, one question. Mm -hmm. uh, the, mm -hmm. the confinement on previous slide, mm -hmm. uh, so, the, uh, so that is coming from uh, uh, M theory. I mean- the, So if I will explain that if mm -hmm. we just uh, have a duality between uh, D0 matrix model and uh, the type two string, mm -hmm only the confined phase exists. So if we assume the uh, type 2 string, matrix model is always the, uh, the confined. So this and, has been shown in uh, string uh, theory? Uh, yes, yes. I will explain how uh, the confinement and the duality to type 2 mm. is related. Mm. Then, okay. then, then, of course, we have to go something else, right? <laughs> as long as we mm. stick in, uh, stuck in uh, the confined mm. phase, we cannot see M theory. Oh. Yeah, so I will have a slide for that. Uh, it, it was actually about that question. So there we can discuss again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So in uh, Itzaki and the collaborators paper, so it's a kind of you know generalization of original pro 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 proposal by Marda Sena. So they say that the p plus one p spatial plus one time direction p plus one dimensional uh, super Yamir theory. Uh, which describes uh, DP brains and the strings connecting them. They are dual to uh, type 2A or 2B string in black P brain background in near to foot length. And this P can be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3. When P is 3, so this theory is a 3 plus 1 dimensional super mill, that is conformal theory. And we uh, dual side is a black 3 brain geometry, which is nothing but it is 5 process five. So this is a sort of a generalization of ADS5 shift D4 correspondence to other dimension. And uh, we want to uh, focus on P equal to zero today and want to demonstrate that this duality is actually correct. So this is a paper. So in zero plus one dimensional theory, there's a, a one big difference from a, a four dimensional theory, namely the fourth coupling, which is G Yamil squared times N, has non-trivial mass dimension. And then uh, this uh, dimensional coupling uh, sort of give a energy scale, natural energy scale in theory. So any dimension for quantity like temperature or energy should be measured in the unit of this dimension for coupling. Say lambda times energy to the minus three is dimensionless. This can be regarded as dimensionless effective coupling. But then large lambda and small e are the same because you know here we have minus sign. Small e makes this combination large. So low energy and strong coupling are the same thing. So in order to have a good gravity dual, we have to go to strong coupling. But in this case, uh, we do strong coupling is equivalent to low energy. So if we go to low energy regime of this model, we have a good gravity dual. And uh, because this is dimensional, 
simple uh, dimensional analysis doesn't work, and you know, very strange a uh, power of the temperature can appear. Energy is this calculable factor times n square times uh, some strange factor of this dimensional full coupling times this very strange power of temperature. This is what uh, these people obtained by using uh, dual gravity analysis. And uh, so we want to take a two fifth limit first. Okay, so we set coupling lambda to be one from now on. And they also uh, analyzed how uh, size of the string and the size of the black hole are related. Okay, and if alpha prime size of the string is uh, much smaller than a black hole, size of black hole, then uh, string looks like point particle. So, you know, supergravity can be good. That happens when energy is small, like at the strong coupling. And, uh, but if uh, energy is too small, then we go to very strong coupling. Then uh, this is related to Dirato, uh, growth of uh, string coupling, or exponential of Dirato. If we go to too low energy, then uh, string coupling becomes large, and then uh, we have to go beyond the supergravity. And if you look at this expression for the energy, at any non-zero t, energy is order n square. That would mean all color degrees of freedom. You know, uh, matrices are n by n, and you know there are n squared gluons. All gluon degrees of freedom are visible. That would mean this is con the confined phase. And all the way down to zero temperature, as long as you have a you know, tiny, tiny non-zero temperature, it's a order n squared, so it's deconfined, except for exact zero temperature, the type 2a uh, super string predicts that uh, this system has to be deconfined. And the p equal to zero is uh, interesting in the sense, uh, particularly interesting for me, because the Monte Carlo simulation is doable by using techniques developed uh, in a lattice gauge theory community. Non-zero spatial dimension P are also doable, but much harder. <laughs> and simply because if we, we have uh, uh, more dimensions in order to uh, approximate a continuum of space time by using lattice, we need more points. <laughs> okay, then, then computational cost naturally goes up if you, you have more uh, lattice points. And so th there are other subtleties as well, but I think this is the most uh, uh, crucial factor. And of course, then p equals to zero is easier. In this case, we have only time direction. And if when we do thermodynamics, we consider imaginary time, Euclidean time. And but uh, if we have only one time direction, then we have to regularize de de uh, only that direction. But if we have a p dimensions, then you know to each direction we introduce some number of lattice point, and the number of sides is a product, so it quickly grows. So we want to stick to p equals to zero so that uh, we can uh, go closer to continuum limit and we can go to larger n. And there's a subtlety so-called sign problem. If you don't know, you can just uh, uh, ignore. And in case you know, I, let me just say, uh, here we use so-called phase quench approximation, which means we forget about sign. And uh, empirically, that is very good. If you really worry about it, we can discuss uh, after the talk. And uh, around 2016, uh, we started the uh, uh, Monte Carlo string M theory collaboration, MC SMC. And the uh, first paper was this. Uh, and uh, at the time, uh, we had access to the good computers, uh, good at the time. So, okay, supercomputer in uh, Kobe and Vulcan in Ibamo. And uh, they don't really exist anymore. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we had access to those good machines in 2000, around 2016. So we studied uh, uh, this matrix model by using these computers. We wanted to take large n and the continuum limit. And we wanted to study various different temperatures. So we wanted to study diff various different value of n, matrix size n, various different temperature, various different lattice sizes, so that we can take continuum limit. And so we had to study like 100 parameters, different parameters. But for each parameter, typically the number of CPU we used is uh, of this order. So this is a uh, modest compared to that QCD. And the uh, Nicolinality and Ivan Barkovich worked really hard. And uh, thanks to their hard work, we got this result. This is, we performed the large M extrapolation and we took continuum limit. So this line 
is a supergravity. So 7.4 times uh, t to the uh, 2.8. And these points are large and continuum extrapolate value of uh, energy obtained in, from matrix model. This directory is temperature. These lines are uh, the feet from a previous references. So you can ignore at this moment. Okay, so strong coupling is low temperature or low energy. Weak coupling is high temperature or high energy. And at the strong coupling, supergravity is a good description of the matrix model. And we can actually see that as we go to lower temperature, which is the strong coupling, uh, difference between supergravity and the matrix model decreases. And these lines are the fit, which took into account finite coupling correction or stringy alpha prime correction. And we could see perfect agreement between string theory and the uh, uh, matrix model. In order to see supergravity is reproduced, we used uh, this uh, analytic uh, formula obtained from string theory as input. So these uh, numbers written in red are unknown analytically. But these coefficients like B or C are not known. This is reading supergravity contribution, and this is a string alpha prime correction. And we did a three parameter fit, fixing these parameters, these numbers, I, by using them as input. But we pretended that we didn't know this number. OK, so we did the three parameter fit. And we got uh, three, 7.3 plus minus 0 0.3, which is good agreement with the uh, uh, string supergravity value, 7.4. So supergravity is working. And for string theory, you know, this uh, specific power, like 23 over 5, this is related to a uh, specific feature of alpha prime correction. OK, so if we can reproduce this power, it would be good supporting the evidence that the stringy correction is also described by matrix model. And so we did three parameter fit. And uh, this power, we pretended that we didn't know this number. And we got 4.6 plus minus 0 0.3, which is a really good agreement with this. So now we safely say that the, uh, this matrix model can describe a type 2 way super string perfectly. So at least the duality uh, between this model and uh, type 2 super string is good. And we want must, to go to maybe one question. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the fit, next slide, uh, the slide with the fit. Uh, yeah, uh, previous slide. Please. Sorry, the fit for, ah, uh, yeah. So here, uh, have you tried a fit with everything unknown? Uh, then there are, so, so here I wrote that the three, if we did three parameter fit, Oh, and and for would... parameter fit, if we have too oh. many parameters, because we don't have you know many too many points, uh, mm -hmm. fit is not stable. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so you know, by studying lower temperature, for example, uh, then higher time or the times should be negligible. Mm -hmm. I imagine that we could go to this temperature region very precisely. And mm -hmm. then we can use only leading time for the fit. So, and uh, probably we can leave this and this both unknown, and we can do fit. And then it, we mm -hmm. should be able to reproduce this number or this number. Mm -hmm. That's a much stronger test. But we couldn't That's... do that because uh, at that time we had only this point. Mm -hmm. And we are now going to lower temperature, and uh, hopefully, uh, so I can uh, give you an update. Mm -hmm. But if you, re you really want to, uh, forget about any input from gravity, you should go to this temperature, which may yes. um, which should be doable you know, in the future, but not yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so Anosh may still have some doubt, but uh, hopefully at least uh, to some extent I could convince you. And uh, I want to see if uh, M theory is described. Okay, and uh, uh, this is a picture taken from uh, Itzaki and the collaborators' paper. And so we tested, uh, so this is a, a phase diagram in terms of log and uh, uh, energy. And at the higher temperature region, we could see the agreement between this mod matrix model and the type 2 S3. And because of this uh, uh, relation, 
in uh, type 2 supergravity. If uh, uh, we go to very low temperature, low energy, then uh, Dilaton grows. Then uh, size of the M3 circle is related to Dilaton. So, you know, M3 is a strong coupling limit of type 2A string theory. And the size of the M3 circle is uh, uh, proportional to uh, the ex expectation value of Dilaton. So, uh, or strong string coupling, sorry. So if we can go to very strong coupling region, which is very low energy, M theory should appear. And uh, referring to BFSS and the uh, uh, papers in the context of BFSS, these people argue that then there should be some phase transition to M theory. And we want to see whether we can actually say BFSS uh, like behavior here. Okay, this is our next target. And as so, imagine that we went gradually low energy, and then uh, as I, as we say the as I say the M theory cycle gradually opens up because of this. So this is the size of M theory cycle. cycle. But then uh, when M theory cycle is not very large, so imagine that so this line and this line should be identified. So this is actually circle with the periodic boundary condition. Okay, so this direction is M theory circle. If uh, black, black zero blade is just a black hole, but if black hole is uh, bigger compared to M theory circle, it completely fills uh, M theory circle uniformly. And we get the uh, uniform string as an uplift of 10 dimensional solution to 11 dimensional solution. And the, uh, but this black hole has a charge, digital brain charge. So we, uh, this black string has to be uh, boosted to this direction a little bit. Okay. But anyway, essentially, this is a uniform machine. But then M3 cycle goes up, opens up more and more if we go to low energy. Then uh, it's harder to uh, fill M3 cycle if black hole becomes smaller compared to the uh, uh, size of the M3 cycle. So gradually, uh, no uniformity appears, no uniform string appears. And then eventually, it cannot you know, wrap on M3 circle and the pitches off, and uh, they just phase transition to 11 dimensional black hole. And if this M3 circle is much bigger than a black hole, it's just a 11 dimensional black hole in no contact factor space. This phase is a, a matrix black hole. And this region, this region is essentially this string in uh, this picture. So this kind of phase transition should be visible in a matrix model if uh, M3 is actually described. This, this is a highly non-trivial prediction, OK? And the recall, uh, let's see what would happen. So we studied Tofu's limit, OK? And the Tofu's coupling had a non-trivial mass dimension. When we took Tofu's large limit for the comparison with the type 2A super string, this combination, lambda to the minus 1 third times t, this uh, dimensionless combination is fixed to n to the zero. And the energy, dimensionless energy, was n squared. Well, equivalently, we see we can, could fix lambda equals to one. And then t, we took t to be order one, and the energy was order n squared. Okay? And we saw the confined phase. And we showed the plot of energy, but we can also uh, plot the product loop, which is the order parameter of the confinement. Then it should behave roughly like this. And we always saw the confinement, the confined phase at any non-zero temperature. Okay, this was uh, uh, consistent with type 2 string. But we want to claim that there is confined phase as well. And those both phases are both uh, stable. And the transition uh, tunneling between these two phases is very uh, rare. Okay, and so energy is exact zero. And the product group is exactly zero in a large end limit. More precisely, we want to claim that this uh, uh, the confined phase cannot go exactly to zero temperature at large but finite end. And there is a confined phase which starts with uh, zero temperature, and it can survive to some high temperature, but this is finite. But as n grows, this point moves to left, and this point moves to right. And gradually, uh, this kind of picture emerges uh, in the strict large limit. And this deconfined phase 
correspond to type 2a string, we, as we already saw. And uh, free energy minimum, this, this is also free energy minimum. And there is free energy maximum separating between these two free energy minimum. And these correspond to M3. I want to uh, uh, convince you that this picture should be uh, correct. I don't have a precise proof, but I want to make a, a possibility argument that this is the case. And to understand that, let's see what is happening in a better understood case, which is four dimensional supermeos, which is dual to type 2b on ADS fat process file. Uh, is there any questions so far? It is fine. <laughs> Maybe I'm going too fast. <laughs> I'm worried. OK, let me go. Uh, so this is a, a phase diagram of a, a black hole in ADS5 cross S5. So we consider micro canonical ensemble. Namely, we each, instead of changing temperature, we change energy as a controlling parameter. OK, and we take two fourth coupling to be fixed but large, so that we can use a real gravity picture to analyze super ML. At the low energy, we have just a, a sparse gravity gas or string gas. And uh, energy, as the energy goes up, temperature goes up. So up, so here to reading order, it's just a exact zero. But uh, if you take into account of the correction, energy is gradually going up and the temperature is uh, quickly going up. And then at some point, so-called uh, hagedron string sets in. And uh, instead of sparse uh, uh, string gas, those strings uh, uh, wants to uh, be connected and form a longer string with a complicated shape. And the energy and the entropy are proportional to the length of the string. And then if uh, as, as energy goes up, this string becomes longer and the complicated shape, there are many uh, shape it can take. That would mean a lot of entropy is packed here. Then if huge entropy and energy is packed in a small region of the space, then of course uh, it becomes black hole. But this black hole is much smaller than ADS5 cross S5. So it looks almost, uh, like a black hole in flat space time, flat 10 dimensional space time. And uh, such black hole uh, has a negative space heat. I mean, energy is proportional to T to the minus seven. And as uh, uh, energy goes up, temperature goes down. And at some point, this uh, string becomes large and the field's compact space is five completely. So there is a phase transition, which is a localized black hole to a uh, bigger black hole. And uh, 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 it completely uh, fills S5. And at some point, uh, specific turns to positive. And this black hole is so-called the ADS Schwarzschild black hole. This is 10 dimensional Schwarzschild black hole. And this phase is uh, uh, better understood. Uh, it, it appears in many uh, literatures, but this phase is also known. And uh, interestingly, such a you know a phase with negative space heat. Usually, people think such phase is not relevant in some dynamics. You know, this is unstable phase. But uh, as uh, pointed out by Horowitz, this phase is uh, actually stable in microcanonical ensemble because uh, ADS space time is a sort of a finite size box, and we have a small uh, black hole with negative space heat here. Then this has a negative space heat, which would mean uh, it emits radiation and gradually evaporate. And if there is no box, it can completely evaporate. But because it's in a box, at some point, uh, graviton gas fill this box. And then uh, this graviton gas cannot become too dense. Uh, if a gra density of graviton gas goes up, then this black hole can absorb graviton gas. So at some point, uh, uh, this system reaches a uh, thermal equilibrium. So this uh, uh, black hole with a negative space heat can uh, exist stably. More precisely speaking, this phase is a small black hole plus some graviton gas in a box. OK, so such phase is actually uh, stable. And the entropy and the energy is mainly carried by this 
small black hole. In the field theory sense, we are talking about the compact space. In compact space, uh, uh, negative space heat is allowed. OK. And uh, we thought two foot limit, you know, two foot coupling was fixed, but we can also go beyond two foot limit. For example, lambda can increase as n uh, increases. Then, if lambda is bigger than some specific power of n, then uh, a Huggedron string phase, this phase disappear, and the uh, string cast phase is uh, directly connected to small black hole. And this highest temperature is uh, t to n to the uh, 2 over 17. Yeah, very strange power. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, this is not really important, but I just wanted to tell that there are uh, two different patterns. Okay, and we want to relate to this analysis in micro canonical ensemble to canonical ensemble. In a lattice simulation, we use a Euclidean path integral, which is related to canonical ensemble. But uh, probably you're confused what I mean by micro canonical and what I mean canonical. So let me uh, make a statement clear. In micro canonical ensemble, energy is controlling parameter. Okay, and the micro canonical temperature is determined from uh, 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 behavior of entropy. So in micro canonical ensemble, we fix energy. And then the uh, state of the system is determined such that entropy at fixed energy is maximized. And the entropy is determined as a function of energy. And then from this, we can determine micro canonical temperature. And then by taking the uh, derivative uh, 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 with, of energy with respect to temperature, we can get specific heat capacity. And that was negative in uh, Schwarzschild black hole phase. Canonical ensemble means fixed temperature. So a canonical Pachon function is uh, exponential of entropy, which is number of states, times Boltzmann factor integrated over different value of energy. And then this combination leads to uh, this free energy. And this free energy should be minimized. Uh, a state which minimizes free energy is naturally realized at each fixed temperature. That is a canonical ensemble. And the free energy is written like this. And if we take the derivative of this free energy with respect to energy, so this becomes one. This is uh, fixed, and this becomes uh, one over micro canonical temperature. So free energy maximum or minimum at each fixed canonical temperature t would mean a point where micro canonical temperature agree with the canonical temperature. This is how micro canonical and canonical ensemble are related. Okay, and if we take derivative one more derivative, then we can see that maximum of free energy, which is less dominant, actually less dominant in canonical ensemble. the positive space heat. So in canonical ensemble, it says uh, my internet connection is unstable. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so for for a few seconds, it uh, went off. But I think ah, OK, OK, okay. Yes. OK, sorry. So anyways, uh, so maximum or minimum of free energy is related to the sign of uh, 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 space heat. So this phases correspond to specific heat positive you know as temperature goes up energy is going up so these uh, phases correspond to minimum of free energy in the canonical ensemble and this intermediate region you know temperature is going down as energy goes up this correspond to maximum of free energy so at each fixed temperature uh maybe i i had to it could be better if I put one more picture. But uh, so this free energy maximum is separating two free energy minima, and they can stably coexist. Okay, so uh, to go beyond this maximum, we there is some uh, kind of potential barrier. But free uh, free energy goes up, so it's a sort of potential barrier. 
And uh, it's tunneling is more and more suppressed at large n. Okay, so these two phases can coexist. And if we take large n, this is the highest temperature of uh, uh, this minimum confined phase, close to infinity. This is something, you know, very similar to our proposal about VFSS matrix model. And if we use ABGM theory, we can see something very similar. <laughs> so uh, according to uh, uh, Horowitz's analysis, uh, this power changes slightly, but it's essentially the same as uh, uh, essentially the same as uh, four-dimensional supermills. And at large end, it becomes like this. But the um, ABGM theory. So I have a question here. Uh, so mm -hmm. maybe I missed it. So uh, what was the uh, criteria that um, was leading to co uh, coexistence of two uh, phases together? So okay. was so, it the large end limit or the temperature which was? Uh, la so we consider fixed. So we fix temperature, okay, yes. and increase end. And at each fixed temperature, uh, so you can imagine, uh, so, sorry, I cannot draw, but uh, so you can imagine that uh, uh, as, a, as we uh, increase energy, so first this is a uh, free energy minimum, okay? And the free energy goes up to the here. And uh, that free energy is larger is such a configuration is not important in part integral, okay? okay? And then from here, the free energy goes down to the here. And then from here, it goes up again. And so, and uh, so to tunneling for the tunneling from here to here to take place, we first the free energy has to go up and then go down. Oh, okay. Okay, and uh, that difference between uh, free energy between here and here, or here and here, that increases with n. Oh, okay. So uh, if you do a uh, lattice simulation, tunneling rate from here to here, or here to here, should we have something like exponential minus n squared or something? Yes. And the tunneling rate becomes exponentially small as n increases. And that can be said at each fixed temperature. Okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, so, uh, you know, that was a kind at, at least behavior here. And that that this confined phase can exist uh, uh, to parametrically high temperature. That was very similar to our proposal about the BFS symmetric model. But in ABGM or for the cost for this part actually doesn't come down. It's different from uh, BFSS. And also for the super mills, in for the super mills, this region was a string theory. This region was a string theory. In ABGM, this region is M theory. This region is M theory. But in BFSS, we want to claim that this part is type 2 this part is uh, 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 M theory. So it's not exactly the same, right? So we want to make an analogy much sharper. So I want to show that the uh, scene as a matrix model, or if we focus on color degrees of freedom in matrix model or YMLs, exact same uh, physics is happening. And the uh, uh, transition from a string to M theory in BFSS and the uh, transition from string to string in for these super mills or M theory to M theory in uh, ABGM are essentially the same thing. That's what I want to play. And for that, I want to develop some geometric interpretation uh, in which applies to those uh, QFT and uh, matrix model. For BFSS matrix model, there was a proposal by Banks, Fisher, Krebenov, and Saskin, which said that uh, 11 dimensional Chabal shaped black hole phase should be described by a bound state of uh, not all, but a part of these braids in the model. And the number, say, let's use M to denote the number of uh, D brains in a black hole. And the number of uh, D brains in a black hole is uh, roughly entropy. And this is much smaller than M. And M decreases as a black hole evaporates. You know, this block becomes smaller and smaller. And the other D brains can be used to describe black holes. And I want to claim that similar picture holds more generally, even for ADS5, cross, ADS5 shift correspondence. And the intuitive geometric picture 
in VFSS matrix model, which led to this picture, uh, is actually applicable for Maldacena type gauge gravity duality. This is somewhat speculative, but I will uh, give you some concrete recipe. Again, going back to uh, these papers, you know, they claim that the P plus one dimensional YAMLs is a dual to type two string in the near to foot degree. And uh, the P brain is one plus P dimensional object. Okay, so there's a P spatial dimension. And the string therapy has nine spatial dimension. So there are uh, nine minus P transverse directions, and they correspond to nine minus P scalar fields. And those scalar fields are related to uh, transverse dimension. And uh, if we see this YAML theory as a low energy effective action of the Debray and the open strings, we can use the uh, uh, elegant uh, geometric interpretation introduced by Witten. So imagine that the matrices are almost diagonal. Then correcting a uh, one one component we can make a vector in R9 minus P. And according to Witten's interpretation, this is a location of a first D ray in a nine minus P dimensional space. And correcting a two two component, we can make a, a vector in this space that uh, is a location of a second D ray and so on. And uh, there are small off diagonal entries and uh, IJ of diagonal component is related to string excitation between i and the jth degree. So if ij component is uh, very small, that would mean almost no string is excited between two degrees. If it's relatively large, that would mean more open strings are excited between two degrees. And uh, th there are uh, various ways to justify it, various evidences. But uh, uh, one easy thing to see is that it is this. Uh, in string theory viewpoint, if open string is stretched between two D brains, then its math, math should be proportional to length. If you look at the YAML theory, the YAML theory has this committed uh, term, uh, sorry, committed a square. I needed a square here. Uh, but then uh, uh, if we uh, assume they are close to diagonal, then uh, this, can be written like this. So this is the difference between a diagonal entry. But this is exactly you know, this way. So mass of the uh, open string is precisely reproduced, at least that we copy, okay, from a uh, YAML theory. And also from a string theory point of view, if a matrix is diagonal, okay, so then there are open uh, D brains without open string excitation. And if all D brains are sitting at the same place, such system, such a state should have an enhanced symmetry. So such system should be UN invariant. But this is actually uh, encoded in matrix. You know, uh, unit matrix is a UN invariant. And if N1 D brains are sitting at the same place, N2 D brains are sitting somewhere else, and so on, and there is no string excitation then uh, we still have enhanced symmetry, but not as big as this. It's like UN1 cross UN2 cross da da da. And this is actually realized in uh, YAML theory. And uh, you know, we can also see that supersymmetry agrees and uh, YAMLs appear as a uh, low energy of the uh, DBI action and so on. So there's a good evidence that this uh, YAML theory describes a system of D brains and uh, eigenvalues of matrices correspond to location. And uh, if we have some of diagonal excitation in uh, between D brains sitting at the same point, uh, we have some uh, non-trivial extended object. No, so we have a multiple non-commutative uh, blocks of diagonal blocks at zero. And then uh, these blocks can describe a non-trivial extended object. And we can uh, have, uh, so in this picture, we have three objects, but we have we can have four, four objects or five objects or whatever. In that sense, uh, uh, large N is essentially a second quantization. And uh, BFSS used this picture, and they also claim that uh, not this model is not just a low energy effective theory, but uh, uh, 
full gravity can be described. And uh, Maradasana's conjecture also claim that uh, uh, large energy theory can describe gravity, not just a low energy effective action of the brain system. Okay, and the BFSS has, you know, this uses this uh, Witten like uh, geometry interpre geometric interpretation introduced by Witten essentially. But uh, uh, they claim that this uh, geometric interpretation can be used in even in gravity. In this context, natural hope would be that this geometric picture, I would say this is a BFSS like geometric picture, can be used in uh, Maldasena type gauge gravity duality as well. In matrix model, we had nine scalars, so we could describe R9. And for these supermills, we have six scalars. They describe R6. But R6 can be written as a product of uh, uh, radial direction times sphere. And this and the original four dimension in QFT are combined to form uh, ADS5. And this is you know, how ADS5 pro, uh, geometry appears from uh, the brain uh, background. And I want to claim that this picture <laughs> can be actually used. And uh, previously, uh, there was a famous argument by Poruchinsky, which uh, suggested that uh, uh, such interpretation cannot be used to edit CFD. And I want to uh, show how uh, his argument can be fixed. Uh, is it OK so far, this uh, geometric interpretation? It's just an uh, eigenvalues allocation. Is it fine? I want to justify this. And I will explain in how black hole four-dimensional supermills is described in this picture. OK, so we consider a matrix model for simplicity, OK? I, uh, though we want to claim that this is applicable to QFT as well. Uh, generalization is straightforward, if you understand that. So, we, we can just imagine uh, that is regularization of uh, higher dimensional theory and the almost the same argument can be applied. So let's consider a simple uh, matrix model Hamiltonian. And the existence of a fermion is not really crucial. So let's uh, forget about fermion. And we added the mass term here because the detail of the uh, model doesn't really matter. <laughs> But uh, if you don't like, you can forget about this time. This time is not really essential. Puzzle. So suggest uh, I have a question there. So mm -hmm. uh, while including the fermion, so is it uh, so these classical flat direction would come into the quantum picture as well when we include? Uh, the yes, yes. Is it so yes. So dynamics that's why really it's not changing. Essential is it? Uh, uh, so. Okay, so in order to have a good gravity dual, supersymmetry is really important. And uh, okay. that flat direction survives at quantum level with, you know, when Enfermio is introduced. That is a necessary feature for uh, dual gravity picture to work. So if you forget about this fermion and take classical uh, uh, the bosonic Hamiltonian, we don't really have a good weakly curved gravity dual. But uh, the puzzling issue Polchinski raised is actually doesn't really care about the existence of the gravity dual. So the same uh, puzzling issue exists in a generic matrix model on the QFT. And when it ap is applied to theory with the gravity dual, it uh, introduces serious tension with the duality. That was his claim. Okay. And historically, people believe that by introducing fermion and take a non trivial theory, which can have a gravity dual, that puzzle can be resolved. That was people thought in the past 20 years. <laughs> but actually, this is not really the case. And uh, for the resolution, the detail of the theory doesn't matter either. OK, so puzzling issue was this. So just by two fifth counting, Trace x squared is n squared. Whether you uh, consider a uh, ground state or higher exci highly excited state, it doesn't matter. As long as the foot counting holds, this has to be the case. Trace xy squared is a sum of uh, eigenvalues of xy squared. 
and the xi squared is n by n matrix. So there are n eigenvalues summed up to n squared. Each eigenvalue has to be n. The eigenvalue of xi should be square root n. And this is actually too large. So uh, in order to have a, a, in a string theory, it, uh, if we use this location eigenvalue equals to location picture, this is square root n actually means in the case of radius shift square root n is, is almost ADS radius. And in a diesel brain system, this is a really huge region around the center of the bug where weakly coupled gravity is good. If you go too close to the boundary, alpha prime correction becomes large. But when weakly curved gravity is good, eigenvalue has to be smaller than square root n. But they say that already in the ground state, somehow eigenvalue is as large as n, square root n. And you cannot really have an eigenvalue sitting close to the origin. So the brains are not sitting close to the origin, even in ground state, it's kind of spread out. We can also calculate trace x trace committed a square, this is n to the three, just again from two fourth counting. Even the foreground state, this is true. And this introduces huge non-commutativity. And uh, in, order for, in order to identify a diagonal entry and uh, coordinate, we assumed matrices are almost diagonal. But we, it, this huge non-commutativity non tells us that the matrices cannot be diagonalized simultaneously. So in uh, BFSS like interpretation, we assume that the matrices can be taken almost a diagonal, almost a block diagonal. But uh, Porchinsky's argument shows that that's impossible. So BFSS like picture should not be applicable. And so that was a puzzle. And so in the case of ADS safety, to see sub ADS distance, this picture cannot work. In a diesel brain case, in order to see uh, sent, detect the center of the bug, it doesn't work. And the resolution is as follows. Uh, so it, it's very simple, actually. When you know the answer, it's almost trivial. So I put hat here. This is momentum. This is a uh, coordinate. But they are n by n matrix, n by n matrices. But each matrix entry is an operator. OK, so commutator of x and p is, you know, is uh, non-zero for each matrix entry. OK, so each matrix entry has to satisfy canonical commutation relation. That means uh, uh, each matrix entry has to satisfy Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And the uh, protein scales argument had the three steps. This is uh, to hoof counting, which is correct. And then he said, OK, so then eigenvalue of xi squared is uh, uh, n. This step is wrong. And once we assume this, this part was correct. Implicit assumption here was that he assumed there is a matrix, which is n by n Hamishan, and the trace of xi squared is n squared. In terms of uh, uh, Hilbert space, he assumed that uh, uh, coordinate eigenstate. But because of uncertainty principle, if we do that, then uh, momentum is not determined at all. So can it, uh, P squared uh, diverges. So this is not low energy state. So there is no such matrix. And instead, we have a wave packet. But uh, it, this is a wave packet in this higher dimensional space. OK, and this wave function has to be smoothly extended in R9n square. OK, and because it has no trivial size, such matrix is not uniquely determined. Physically meaningful matrix, which we can obtain from this, is actually sent up wave packet. So in Porchinsky's argument, in his kind of took a generic point from this wave function. But the generic point in wave, uh, wave function is uh, meaningless. We have the only meaningful matrix we can imagine is a center of a wave packet. So we use y to denote that. Then uh, what we see is that uh, by gauge transformation, this uh, location of wave packet moves. 
but the shape doesn't change. And the ground state is a seeking localized wave packet at the center. And you would think why I'm talking about the non-gauge invariant mode, but uh, uh, act, you, know, you would say physical state has to be gauge invariant, but actually there are two equivalent ways of uh, describing wave packets. And uh, function at finite temperature. So this part is a projection to singlet sector. So this G is gauge group. So there was case, a small unit. connection problem. Maybe we lost you for, I guess, 10 seconds or something. Ah, sorry, sorry. I wanted to say that, uh, uh, I wanted to say that, uh, uh, so there are two equivalent ways of describing a partial function, writing partial function in extended Hilbert space, which contains a uh, gauge non-singlet and gauge invariant Hilbert space, they are equivalent. And if we start with gauge, a uh, path integral with gauge field, first we get this expression. And here we use extended Hilbert space, but today is a projection to singlet sector inserted. Then taking into account this projection, we get this expression, which people usually imagine. Okay, and uh, if we have gauge non-singlet state here, we can imagine all the uh, different wave packets connected by gauge transformation, and we can take linear combination. And this is how these two uh, pictures are related. So we can take just wave packets localized at each, you know, some particular point, or we can uh, treat gauge orbit together. And so we can do both. And this is a picture people use when people imagine uh, BFSS like picture. Okay, and we are, I'm talking about the, using this picture. And we can see that as long as this distance, square root of trace y square, is larger than one, there's no almost no overlap between wave packets. So actually, the resolution is order one, not the square root n, like Polchinski said. This is how Portinsky's puzzle is resolved. And the ground state corresponds to the state where all the rings are sitting at the origin and there is no open string excited at all. So we can go very close to the center. And uh, sorry, I'm spending almost an hour and uh, I feel like I, it takes another 15 or 20 minutes. So should I skip uh, some of the things or I can? Maybe you can go ahead, yeah. Ah, okay, so in order to see how you know what I said right now is working, we can take a very simple model, as simple as Gaussian matrix model. So Gaussian matrix model, in this case, so you know I said coupling to be zero. This is just a bunch of how many oscillators. There are nine n squared how many oscillators, but we have to impose a gauge singlet constraint. Okay. And the ground state of Gaussian matrix model is just a Fock vacuum. Okay, so we take a Fock vacuum for uh, each uh, ground state and take a tensor product. And then wave function of this uh, uh, ground state is just like, like this, exponential minus trace x squared. This is trivial gauge invariant and it's very well localized around the origin. And there is no, uh, no way uh, we can diagonalize <laughs> this uh, uh, x. So whatever gauge transformation we perform, this is just the exact same wave function. And uh, actually the same is happening in the strong company. And in order to have generic wave packet uh, localized uh, away from the origin, in the case of Gaussian matrix model, we can use a coherent state. So we uh, shift the uh, center of uh, each uh, so the, this was just a product of uh, uh, wave packet for each uh, matrix entry. So we can uh, shift the center uh, of uh, uh, each harmony oscillator. And uh, it uh, amounts to acting this operator to ground state. Well, if you want to have a non-zero momentum, you can uh, apply a bit more complicated thing to ground state. This is, but this is a localized wave packet around this point Y, which is a parameter here. 
And you can easily see that by gauge transformation, ground state doesn't change, but uh, you know, this part changes like this. That's it. And the shape doesn't change. It's just uh, it's, uh, location of the center moves. This is how uh, you know, what I said is realized. And uh, I claim that center of a wave packet is related to Debray geometry. And actually, to, uh, in this way, we can uh, 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 repeat. In, if we identify Y, the center of a wave packet, as a Debray geometry, then uh, Witten's argument can be applied. If we, we just take random point, Witten's argument cannot be applied. So imagine that the uh, 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 matrix Y is diagonal. And uh, I, I component is this, okay? And this uh, specifies the location of I to the brain in R9. Then where coherent state is like this. If some D brains are sitting at the same place, some D brains are sitting somewhere else and so on, we get this enhancement fact, this symmetry. So th this particular coherent state is invariant under this. But if we just take one generic point from this wave packet, we don't have this symmetry. And also, uh, if we introduce a small coupling, then uh, and take a, a state to be this non-trivial coherent state, then uh, essentially uh, how, uh, how the, the effect of this shift is described. Essentially, we should sandwich Hamiltonian by this and its con conjugate, which amounts to a shift of x hat to x hat plus y. And if we take y to be diagonal, a commutator square squared term gives this term, which is a mass term of uh, off diagonal entry due to Higgson. So by identifying the center of a wave packet and the deep range geometry, we can understand, uh, we can actually see symmetry enhancement and the Fritz Higgson pattern. Uh, as we suggested. Okay, so we had to use center of a wave packet. And in order to go to interacting theory, uh, some non trivial uh, uh, correction to coherent state is needed. And I don't have a, a precise recipe for that, but one natural way of constructing wave packet which satisfies the requirement I mentioned is just to take uh, some. Uh, uh, subset of uh, Hilbert space, which satisfies uh, this constraint. So center of a wave packet should be Y and Q, and then minimize the energy. By doing that, we can construct low energy wave packet, which satisfies all of the property I mentioned. So uh, we can actually use, uh, uh, you know, uh, interpret matrix as describing a location of the brains. Okay, and the only difference is, uh, the only thing we have to be careful of is we should use center of a wave packet as a matrix. And then uh, how a uh, picture like uh, Banks, Fisher, Klevenoff, and Saskin proposed appears. You know, they say that some block describes a uh, uh, black hole and others are gravito. Okay, so how can that uh, be described? Or related the question was uh, how, why ground state is gauge invariant even with interaction? And why eigenvalues tend to roll up so that uh, such subblocks are generated. That's related to a famous Indian guy. <laughs> so actually, uh, I thought the first example of non abelian gauge theory was studied by Jan and Mills, but actually, Bose and Einstein uh, already considered the first example of uh, uh, non abelian gauge theory. And the system they considered was N integrable bosons. So I say that the uh, 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 partial function can be written in two different ways. So we can take a trace over gauge invariant Hilbert space, or we can use the extended Hilbert space, but insert a gauge singlet projection here. Okay, and if gauge group is SUN and the matter content are adjoint, then it's a uh, Yamil's or BFSS. But we can take gauge group to be SUN permutation and we can take any component fundamental field as a matter field, then this is nothing but n in the institution of bosons. Is it clear? <laughs> you know, that, in, that uh, uh, you cannot distinguish bosons means uh, this SN permutation is gauged. 
And as a simple example, let's take a 3D harmonic trap. Okay, so Hamiltonian is just a bunch of uh, uh, harmonic oscillators in three dimensional space. Okay, so this uh, x i y i z i describes x and y and z coordinate of white particle. Okay, and of course, uh, uh, so we just have uh, uh, three n harmonic oscillators, right? And uh, we can uh, use a focus state to describe a complete basis. And the partition function can be trivially written like this. But uh, in order to impose gauge singlet constraint, we insert SN permutation here. Okay, and energy is just a trivial. And the uh, important thing is that we have this uh, weird at the time to sum over all permutation. So only when these uh, labels for folk state is invariant under permutation sigma, this gives one. Otherwise, it's zero. And Einstein's argument is that if all harmonic oscillators are in ground state, no permutation can change the state. So all permutation contribute to the sum. And so this part gives returns n factorial. But if we take a generic excited states in which all uh, particles are in different states, that would mean all the labels are different. Only sigma equals the identity can give non-zero result. Okay, so for generic state, this part gives one. And this huge enhancement for ground state triggers both Einstein condensation. Because of this uh, uh, enhancement factor, many particles want to go to ground state. And if we have, uh, say, n minus m particle in ground state and m of them excited, then we have this enhancement factor. So still many part particles want to go to ground state thanks to this uh, enhancement factor. So in that way, uh, at least partially, Bose-Einstein condensation is formed. And in a zero, exact zero temperature, all state goes to Bose-Einstein condensation. That's uh, what Einstein found in 1924. And the exact same is happening in uh, large energy theory. So if we take y to be non-zero in this m by m block, but the exact zero in this part, we have this enhancement factor. Because of this enhancement factor, uh, such block structure is favored. And this uh, the confined sector describes uh, bound state of m d brains and the uh, strings between them. And nothing is other d brains are peacefully sitting at the origin, and no string is excited. So rather than uh, taking y to be you know kind of random, such that no symmetry is realized, no block structure is uh, realized, because of this enhancement factor, excitation wants to cramp up and want to form a block. This is black hole. Okay, and naturally, I would think uh, if a ground state should be fully gauge invariant. In, in Bose Einstein condensation, ground state wanted to be SN invariant. And in the case of gauge theory, ground state wants to be SUN invariant because of this uh, enhancement factor. And uh, uh, this enhanced excited block can describe black hole. And uh, also, I also said that, uh, oh, I did, didn't say, I wrote, but I didn't say, but this uh, G used in a projection is related to polar group. This is essentially polar group. And uh, typical state which leaves the G, uh, which is invariant under the action of this G, dominates phase distribution. And we can show that if we have such phase, such a state dominate, if such states dominate path integral, then distribution of polar line phase has a non zero offset. And uh, the height of this offset is related to size of the confined, the confined sector. And the exact same can be done uh, for both Einstein condensation. Actually, we can describe an uh, onset of both Einstein condensation in terms of a precoff loop. And uh, in a paper by Feynman, Penrose, Onsaga in 1950, they're essentially doing that. But of course, at the time, precoff loop didn't exist. <laughs> in the notion of precoff loop didn't exist, so they didn't use the notion of precoff loop. But essentially, they uh, were using precoff loop. <laughs> And uh, they were seeing uh, 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 onset of VC as onset of confinement. And uh, oh, so to Indian people, I would say this is so called the gross Wittian Wadia phase transition. So the first example of gross Wittian Wadia phase transition 
uh, was actually both Einstein condensation. People just didn't know, you know those terminologies. So if we look at the focus on the distribution of Prokof line phases, so Prokof loop can be written as the sum of n phase factors, Prokof line phases. At large n, we can imagine continuum distribution. Completely con confined phase is just a uniform distribution. And uh, we have a kind of partially confined phase, which has a non-trivial distribution with a non-zero offset. And the completely confined phase has, uh, uh, for completely confined phase, there's a gap here. This is so-called gross Wittenwardia transition. And those three phases correspond to completely confined, partially confined, you know, this is small black hole, and completely confined phases. This is completely confined. This is completely confined. There is a partially confined phase in between. And uh, the same argument holds for QF2 or matrix model. And uh, also in the case of 4DN equals 4, in the weak coupling, we can analytically solve the model and we can explicitly show that uh, com partially confined phase uh, appears in between. OK, so based on this, uh, we would say uh, black hole formation and evaporation is described like this. So there are particles corres you know, corresponding to some small object scattered on a uh, uh, bulk. And then they come close and form one big block. This is black hole. And then gradually it emits uh, smaller blocks and they evaporate. This is how black hole formation and block, uh, evaporation is described by using this you know, generic uh, fact of partial confinement. And this is very similar to proposal by for 11 dimension black hole by Banks, Fischer, Kremlin, and Sasuke. And uh, this mechanism itself can be applied to four dimensional super mills, you know, to which we already have some analytic uh, uh, understanding. And uh, we can also use it to uh, uh, BFSS. So I would imagine that the exact same is happening in BFSS. And uh, that's the reason I expect it almost exactly the same phase structure should uh, exist in the case of BFSS and for the n equals to Okay, sorry, uh, maybe it was too quick. Was it okay? <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. I, I think I put too much material in the slide, sorry. Anyway, so so we are almost coming to this. So uh, anyways, so let, let, let's see. This is a phase diagram I expect for 11 dimensional black hole. The only difference, qualitative difference from uh, 4 equals to 4 is this point can you know, go down uh, at large area, you know, like this. Other than that, it's uh, exact same as uh, 4 equals to 4. And the same as a uh, gauge theory or matrix model, they are exact same. That's my claim. And what is happening uh, you know, at the fixed uh, temperature is that below some critical temperature, uh, above cri some critical temperature close to zero, uh, this phase is global minimum. And this phase is uh, uh, only local minimum of free energy. And below this TC, uh, this part is local minimum. Okay, anyway, let's just show uh, existence of a confined phase. I have only three slides for this. Okay. Okay, so here, Prokof loop. Sorry, it says internet connection is unstable. So per, here, yes. Prokof, Prokof yeah. loop is a fluctuating uh, very small value. That Prokof loop is close to zero would mean it's confined phase. And the same is happening here. In the deconfined phase, Prokof loop should fluctuate around here. And if we uh, study several different values of n at t, t equals 0 0.2, okay? And uh, uh, at each fixed n, we took continuum limit. So we studied the, the very different uh, lattice size, like 30 lattice point, 36 point, lattice point, and 48 lattice point, and uh, send uh, that number of lattice point to infinity. Then energy, this, this is energy. Energy is compatible with zero for all these values of n. And then, of course, uh, continuum and large n is also consistent with zero. 
Okay, and uh, that energy is zero correspond to confinement. And if we estimate the energy of deconfined phase at this temperature, actually at this temperature, it was hard to study deconfined phase. So, uh, but we can use uh, uh, gravity to estimate how big energy we expect here. Then uh, using this supergravity result, we get something like 0 0.08. 0 0.08 is somewhere here, somewhere here. So it's clearly distinct, different from this value. Okay, so we saw a value which is consistent with zero and inconsistent with the dual gravity prediction for the confined phase. So I would say this is I would safely say it's confined phase. And we can also look at the Poliakov loop. In the case of Poliakov loop, at each uh, fixed lattice size L, we can take large end limit. Uh, so <laughs> for the energy, N dependence was very small and L dependence was large. So we took a continuum limit for each fixed end. And for Polakoff loop, it turned out uh, L dependence is very small, but N dependence is large. So we took a large end limit for each uh, fixed lattice size. And for all of them, we could something like zero, consistent with zero. So this is a Polakoff loop. This is a Polakoff loop. This is a Polakoff loop. So n equals to 10, n equals to 12, n equals to 16, and infinite n. And for Polakoff loop, we don't have a dual gravity prediction, but we can uh, do reasonable extrapolation from a high temperature result. And uh, at this temperature, we expect something like 0 0.5 for the confined phase. So it's uh, clearly different from 0 0.5, right? <laughs> so this cannot be the confined phase. It has to be confined phase. So we could get uh, such result at low temperature. So we actually saw confined phase, which is inconsistent with type 2A, and which is seems to be consistent with M theory. And our N wasn't very big. And uh, in low temperature region, we could only see confined phase. But in uh, by modifying the theory a little bit, by using so-called BMN matrix model, we can also check coexistence of two phases. And I have a lot of uh, backup slides for that, but uh, uh, probably I should skip. Anyway, this is a summary. Sorry that uh, I uh, spent 15 minutes longer than expected. So confined phase in the digital wave matrix model was observed. This is qualitatively consistent with the M3 description. And I think we can study 11-dimensional string, 11-dimensional uh, black string and the black hole via holography. And we, we can use a uh, uh, matrix model. Uh, as a first principle too. And you order to, so here I said qualitatively, and you order to remove this qualitatively, better understanding of the gravity side is needed, and uh, more numerical experiments are needed. Thank you very much. And I, uh, again, I apologize that I couldn't finish and I had to rush till the end. No, that is okay, okay. So thank you for such a wonderful talk. So um, are there any questions? Uh, so please unmute yourself and ask. Well, maybe you have to stop recording so that people can ask a question more, uh, relax yeah. about it. Yeah, maybe uh, I can stop the recording now.